It's legal to be part of the queer community. It is legal to be visible. It is legal to be trans. It is le it's legal. So don't vilify me for being who I am. Help me, you know, discover who I am. What's What's uh, like m first middle and surname. Okay, it's Kim Lillian Van Poorhol. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook with that name. <laughs> oh, when I was in primary school, they called me Vimbox, which is like a gun. Apparently, according to the kids, it sounded like my surname, Van Poorhol. So they called me Vimbox. Sexuality wise, I'm pansexual. I love who I love. I like who I like. I lust who I lust after. Uh, gender wise, I'm non-binary. Uh, and then also just, yeah, I don't know. I just identify as whatever I'm going through in life. And that's my story then. It's difficult to always just place yourself. But it's a very broad question you're asking me. So depending on what you're asking me or like what theme we're talking about, I have a different answer. But generally, I just identify with whatever I believe in. Yeah. <sighs> Chaotically beautiful, with so much potential and so much pain. Scared and liberated at the same time. It's a paradox. It's not one thing. It's my baby. <laughs> um, Femme Project is an organization that I started with two of my friends, uh, Kelly Kupman and Lauren Lopesher. And it stands for Freedom of Education, Motivate Empowerment. Uh, currently, our organization, I think it's grown a lot over the last four years. Uh, we officially registered in 2016 and it's an organization that works with the youth. Uh, we try to introduce themes like the LGBTQIA community, we try to introduce themes of consent, of sexuality, of gender identity, of uh, uh, racial issues, of identity especially because I feel like a lot of um, kids of colour and the youth of colour in South Africa never really had the opportunity due to apartheid and slavery and all of that shit that came prior to 1994. Never really had a time to dissect their identities and um, that's what we try to do. We try to create a space that makes it okay for you to be a kid and that makes it okay for you to ask a question and that makes it okay for you to make mistakes and learn um, from both sides. We learn as much from the kids as they learn from us. So. It's about creating space to dissect all these urgent themes. Um, Femme has also grown a lot from not only doing work in you know, schools or, or with the Sexual and Reproductive Justice Coalition, um, but now it's also focusing a lot on advocacy, uh, you know, with the tampon tax that had to fall, or when we speak about comprehensive sexual education in schools, meaning you know, all of the things that I mentioned earlier on, so we're also trying to move into a new phase of we do a lot of advocacy work and a lot of campaigns and yeah, so that things are just easily accessible whether that be online or in real life. I think I was in school. No, you know what, that's a lie. Actually, screw school. My mom. <laughs> When we were younger, I mean, obviously my mom had been menstruating, um, still menstruates actually, but um, I would see her once a month or so, sitting on the toilet with this massive thing on her pad, or on her panty, and it wasn't like ever a shameful thing. Um, I knew that it was something that happened to my mother, I just didn't exactly know what it was, but I think what I learned from those interactions was that when I passed the bathroom and I saw her sitting there changing her pad, she never did it in a shameful way. She never hid it away. So I think even when I went to school and they started talking about periods and I started to know the scientific and biological names and words and themes and whatever, um, and my friends would be so ashamed of talking about it, I was pretty chilled. 
<laughs> I had my own internalized shame to deal with, but I think my mom was pretty lit when it came to just being chilled about her body. That sex can be pleasurable, that it is not only for reproducing, um, that we have so many different sexualities that need to be celebrated and protected, that there are different types of genders. Um, I wish they would speak about whatever the kids also want to learn about. I feel that many times in the classroom when they discuss sex, it's like, okay, no, now we have to be very robotic about it because otherwise you're going to go into conversations around pleasure. Um, we're going to go into conversations around the clitoris. We're going to go into conversations that make the teacher feel uncomfortable or that makes the teacher think that the kids are going to go out and have sex because we just learned about pleasure. Like, it's not, just give them the information. So, overall, I wish that in the classroom people were just open to speaking about things that are so real. Most of us have sex for pleasure. I mean, don't I? <laughs> just be honest about it. <laughs> religion, culture, <laughs> uh, patriarchy, uh, the literature that is available out there on it, uh, patriarchy, religion, culture, did I mention those? <laughs> no, I, I, I reiterate it because I feel that in a, in a country specifically where they speak about how progressive we should be and how you know, the constitution, all of these things are supposed to be so progressive. Uh, our people aren't. Um, and that isn't always our fault. Um, as I mentioned, religion is a big thing in this country, not just in the country, Africa at large, the world at large. Um, and menstruation was, you can say, criminalized. Uh, not really criminalized, but it's kind of, there's a word that I'm looking for. It was made something to be ashamed of. You know, I can't sit on that couch if I'm menstruating and then someone else can't sit on it either. I can't cook while I'm menstruating. I can't. And that's still a thing that's alive here in many communities all over the world. So I think that's why there's so much shame and so much stigma and so much bullshit, you know. Um, <laughs> we're not living in those times anymore where I can't go for a walk just because I've got my period. Like, I'm not on my deathbed. I've got my period. And I do understand that there are other people who have things like endometriosis and uh, PCOS and all of these other things, and that's a different uh, uh, dynamic and that's a different topic completely. But when it comes to just menstruating, it's my uterus cleaning itself. And I'm not pregnant, thank you very much. <laughs> There's obviously not one. I mean, community to me is the most beautiful thing. And, I feel that community is uh, built through conversations with each other um, and how far you can push those conversations. But for me, that's a, it's, a, it's a strange question to answer because when I'm thinking now, your question triggered memories where it wasn't really great moments, it was more when we were discussing, oh my word, the other day I was walking down the street at night and this guy was following me or this person was following me and I, I reached for my knife like just for safety and I was walking and I started walking faster and they were like oh my word that happened to me too what the fuck? or I was held at this point or that point or something really bad happened to me and then we're like oh my god being a woman or being a girl or being someone who is gender marginalized being lesbian is so dangerous what the fuck are we gonna do and then we discuss how we're gonna fucking mobilize <laughs> it's very <wearing> okay <laughs> You know, so like, even though, yes, if I, it's unfortunate that in the negative moments, you uh, usually come faster than the positive. And I know that on the drive home later, I'm going to think, oh, that was such a great bonding moment. I could have mentioned that. But right now, to me, if I just think now, that's what usually happens. And that hasn't only been once. That's been a couple of times. Oh, but also, positively, I think also the moment that you realize that you can start having these discussions without shame. I think that's also another thing. The moment you decide that I'm going to create this beautiful space where all of us can talk. And then initially your friends, especially if they're new friends, will look at you like, what? Kim is the crazy one. Kim's always talking about this shit. Like, and then after a while, they come to you. They seek you out in order to have that space. 
So I think that to me has been a beautiful aha moment or great moment. It's knowing that I have the power and you also have the power to create a beautiful, brave space for your friends to just be who they are. Be a girl, be a boy, be a non-binary, be a gender fluid, you know, whoever you are, you have that power. Sexual liberation can mean a whole lot of things. I think when I was younger, it, I thought it meant that I'm just okay, just have sex all the time and I'm just gonna masturbate all the time, which I do still. <laughs> but like, I think when I was younger, I thought that everybody, once they get to sexual liberation, they'll just be so chilled with having sex. But as I've grown older and realized that sex, sex as much as it's great, as much as it's pleasurable, it's also kind of overrated <laughs> in the same breath, especially the way that we portray sex. Um, or sexual liberation in the media or wherever you may find yourself but I think to me now sexual liberation means that you hold the power to decide if I want to have sex I'm going to have sex if I want to have sex with 15 people at a time I'm going to do it while being responsible and you know taking care of your sexual health getting tested you know telling everyone involved what's happening of course <laughs> um, or if I don't want to have sex then I don't want to have sex. Like, when I was young, I would tell my friends, oh my God, why don't you masturbate? Like, are you lying to me? But then I realized there's asexuality where people are not always interested in having sex. That's not the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and that's also okay. That's your sexual liberation. Sexual liberation doesn't mean your hormones go all tighty and now you're tighty as well, in terms of sex. But um, how does sex aid play a role in there? I think that again we should speak about the lesbian gay bi pansexual intersex asexual community trans community as well um we should speak about how everyone can keep themselves safe we should talk about the different sexuality so that kids know that it is okay i don't if i'm someone with a vagina i don't have to yearn for someone with a penis what if i want someone you know who is like me what if I want someone who is, what if I don't care what you look like or what genitals you have, you know, those are all sexual orientations and sexual liberations and tied into sexual liberations that we should be discussing and informing kids about. And if you don't know as a parent or if you don't know as a teacher and you have access to the internet, Google that shit, go to a coffee shop, Google it, try and understand. If a kid asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, tell them, I don't know, but tomorrow come back to my class and I'm gonna you know, figure this out so that we can work this through together. Especially because we live in a country where these things are legal. It's legal to be part of the queer community. It is legal to be visible. It is legal to be trans. It is le it's legal. So don't vilify me for being who I am. Help me. You know, discover who I am. Yeah. Oh, if you're gonna ask me one thing, I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay. Maybe the fact that. Okay. Okay. Probably more, more than one's gonna come up now. But one is that just because you have your period doesn't or just because you get a period doesn't mean that now all of a sudden you know you want a baby or just because you are a woman or someone who menstruates like it doesn't that has nothing to do with each other getting a period doesn't mean that i want to reproduce that's one another thing is you don't have to have your period you know you have the option a lot of people especially with the natural movement are always saying things like oh you have to bleed you have to have your period and yeah whereas you know i can also agree to a similar to a certain degree it's also like i have the choice there's medication out there i can go onto the pole i can get go onto the injection because you know i don't want my period that's okay um i think birth control as well in south africa i think that especially teens that we've worked with have told us that they are um looked down upon by older health practitioners when they go there to get their birth control um so I do think there's a gap there. Uh, when we speak about birth control, we have to, you know, provide the birth control that the government says it needs to be for free. Um, and we should also talk about other forms of birth control. There's the IUDs, there, there are various amounts of things that can be used. Um, yeah, and then another thing, overall, generally, I just think the one thing that they don't speak, they speak very mechanically about these things. 
um, we should speak about it on different levels as well. We should speak about the history of it. Uh, ancient cultures that celebrated the period and that made it an amazing, powerful thing. You know, um, yeah, less mechanics, more internal, and what that means. Got it. I'm assuming you did. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. You've been rolling the whole time, right? Mm-hmm. <gasps> <laughs> 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 